Hello plan people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about compaction and specifically how to reduce compaction when we are in a no-till, low-till system. Highly requested video. So let's jump into it. The way you know you have compaction is either you have a compaction tester, which is a soil probe that has a little gauge on the top and you push it in and it's going to tell you on a reading on the dial how compacted your soil is. The other way you can tell if you have compaction is if your, your plants are acting goofy and you're noticing that the runoff is either just slipping right off the top or you have pooling in some places, that is a good indication that you may have compaction. The other way to tell if you have compaction is to actually dig down and see if you hit a hard pan layer or an area that you can't get through. Typically, the way to alleviate compaction is to till it up. So you use a rototiller typically. There's no reason why you can't do this. If you choose to do that, it's completely fine. This is on a small scale garden. You're not gonna you're not gonna ruin the world by doing this. But if you're trying to go no-till as much as possible, if you're trying to you know, nourish microbial communities, if you're trying to build up natural processes such as flocculation and normal glue, soil glue um, aggregates happening, then this video is for you. You can use this in a farming practice and I would love to know if there's any conventional farmers out there that have decided to use this, especially in areas that are, you know, in dips where there's lots of water congregating, but let's just jump into it. So the number one way to alleviate compaction in a system using completely organic, no-till, low-till methods is via plants and specifically using plants that have deep root systems. And not just any deep root system. So typically you'd probably be thinking, well, a carrot has a really deep root system, but carrots aren't very good at digging through the soil and just not caring <laughs> about what happens. If a carrot hits any sort of compaction or hard pan, it just stops. It usually doesn't keep going. However, radishes are actually incredibly good at this to the point that there are scientists looking at using radishes to alleviate compaction. And it's surprisingly not just the tap root on the radish that breaks up the compaction, it's all the little root hairs off of that main stump <laughs> that help break up the compaction. These roots are insane. They're hungry for nutrients and water and they will break up almost anything. So I read some studies on this. There's actually one in Alberta that has been done there's been some in the US and I'm very, very, very impressed with the results. So you don't necessarily have to just do a line of radishes. I would actually suggest intercropping radishes or cover cropping radishes with your main crop. So if you have tomatoes growing, for example, you could put radishes, broadcast radishes in and around your tomato garden or lettuce or anything like that. Any area that you're noticing compaction, honestly, in your flower garden, if you're seeing it, perennial garden, throw some radishes in and it will help enormously with breaking that up without digging up the weed seeds that will come back to haunt you. There are specific radishes that are better than others and the ones that are considered pile drivers is literally the name of the ones the one study literally named them pile driver radishes so i'm like searching all over the internet trying to find like what variety are pile driver radishes how do i find them and it is essentially the icicle t icicle style radishes so zappa seeds i'll put the link down below they've got red icicle radish and they have white icicle radishes and then they also have a Korean radish that would work in the same method. So these radishes aren't the circular ones. They look more like carrots and then they have all these little hairs coming off of them. This is super new in food production and agriculture, but these are being hailed the heroes when it comes to alleviating compaction issues. So what happens is when we plant or we intercrop radishes with the rest of our crop, this big taproot will go in. And then off that taproot, we'll end up with all these little root hairs. 
and those root hairs will just keep on going out and break her, breaking and fracturing that soil. Once we rip the radish out to eat it, obviously, we're not gonna let it sit in the ground and rot, we end up with a plug in the soil. That plug that we have kind of ripped out and now we have a big hole. In that hole, we have the ability to now bring in a ton of oxygen, which just gets those microbes a running and a rolling. And then we have all the little canals that the root hairs have made. These microbes then go in, digest that root hair, digest those root hairs, and then that leaves a hole. That hole now transports water and oxygen and all that fun stuff, which over time will just bring in more macrofauna and then it will just slowly keep on breaking up that soil and aggregating that soil farther and farther. So that's essentially what happens. Think of it as Think of icicle radishes like that lawn thing that you push across your lawn that pulls the, if someone knows the name of that, please comment down below. But the aerators, I think they're called, where it pulls the, the turd out of the ground <laughs> with the hair, with the grass on top, that thing. And that is what the radish is. It's literally just a plug so that when we pull it out, it's aerating our soil, which is going to cause it's just a chain link effect of oxygen means more microbial activity, more microbial activity means more nutrient cycling, more nutrient cycling means more rapid growth of our plants, more rapid growth of our plants means more root hairs, more root hairs means more holes in our soil, more fracturing of our soil. So therefore we end up with more oxygen, which causes more microbes, which cause, so you can just see how it just snowballs off of each other. So yeah. This is a short video, but I hope it helps you if you are deciding to go with a no-till method this year and considering intercropping these in your garden. It would be considered a cover crop. I would not just do radishes for a cover crop. I have another cover crop idea for you that I'll be presenting here very, very soon. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!